Welcome back friends with another movie reaction. Today we're watching A Quiet Place Day 1. I really liked the first movie and the sequel. Probably enjoyed the first one a little bit more, but part 2 was still great. Looking forward to this film and seeing it all play out from a different point of view. I also did like the way Day 1 played out in part 2, and it'll be interesting to see how everybody tries to adapt while nobody understands what's going on, and slowly try to figure out the rules of survival. And we have Lupita Nyong'o leading this film, she's always fantastic. Uh, I'm strapped into my heart rate monitor, PO box addresses in the description. Full reactions on Patreon, leave a like, and let's get started. Yeah, it's a loud ass city. A poem I've been working on. I don't want it, but we've been said I had to, so <laughs> had to. This place smells like shit. Checks out. This place sounds like shit. Personal attacks. That was great. Let's I'm gonna clap for that. <laughs> I mean, they all probably resent the situation they're in. We're going to a show. Half an hour. See, I might be dead by then. <laughs> but if you're not dead, it... when's the last time you were in the city? Last time was supposed to be the last time. Damn. I'll go if we get pizza. Didn't we have pizza yesterday? That wasn't pizza. <laughs> okay, well then, yeah. Fentanyl. It's a puppet show. A puppet? It's a marionette show. We are the marionette club. You lied. You lied. You could have checked the schedule. You tricked. Oh, yeah, I tricked you. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> oh. Oh, hey! This is Frodo. Frodo? How do you do that? There's a little... something that blows air? In the puppet? That doesn't seem right. Yes, I know the balloon is not lifting him up, it's him, but... Still pretty cool. We have to head back now. Why? Something's happening in the city and they want us back ASAP. But we're getting pizza first. Sorry, no. We're getting pizza in the city and then we'll go back. No, we're not getting pizza. Yes, we're, not getting we're pizza. getting Okay, you gotta calm down. Calm down. Don't tell me to calm down. I don't know you <sighs> I'm your friend. Get on the bus. Yeah, get on the bus. She just wants a little bit of dignity and... It's an emergency situation though, like... Holy... Shit's going down. Is your cat okay, Frodo? Uh, that definitely paints an, paints imagery that's reminiscent of 9-11. How long until they realize they sense by sound? Uh. Jeez! And you're knocked out. That actually might be a best-case scenario. Someone's figured out the rules. Oh, He's gonna be a bigger part of this film than I thought. I thought it was just a cameo. Uh, that's a lot of people that have to stay silent. She's somewhere else, right? They dragged her somewhere safe? Oh, yay. Good, quiet kitty. Stay quiet. I guess... Did they jump into the air and get the helicopter? Oh, come on, I don't want to see... Oh, it feels like there's a lot of them out there. Holy shit. Now it's a race. Do these things kill you first or does cancer? 
Oh, you're not getting any more of those, are you? That might not be a bad idea, actually. From a practical standpoint. Draw them in with a lot of sound and then just bomb the heck out of them. He's gonna... Yeah, you might have to kill him. Excuse me? On foot? Oh. Oh my god. That's... He thought she was joking. It's the last... Last thing she wants in this life. Who's even making pizza, though? <laughs> oh boy. Yikes! I'm not sure I would have risked that. I guess around a fountain is maybe okay. Oh, it was cat food. Well, you have to do that. What the hell? Smart. This is a mandatory evacuation. Oh. The attackers cannot swim. Both evacuations are beginning now at the South Street Seaport. We're surrounded by water. Holy crap! They're evacuating? Do you think it's safer to travel like this or separate from them? What about? The one person going in the other direction. Give her more space. Are you for real? Jeez. Well, that just killed a bunch of people. Shut up! Shut the fuck up! Help! Help me! You're killing yourself. I don't understand. What the hell are you doing? Jonathan! Stop! What do you? You know the rules. You can't take care of Jonathan if you're dead. What the frick? Why do you what? How did you swim? I don't understand. Where the hell did you come from? Oh. Oh shit. She has to limp now. What the fuck you doing? He's like, I feel connected to this cat. Why are you following me? Ah. Oh. Where the fuck are you going? Please, please. It doesn't Let's just get out of the way, okay? okay. Is this your place? Yes. Yeah. It is. Kick it down. Kick it down? How loud is that? With the lightning. <laughs> Whoopsies! Ugh. What are you doing? I'm looking for my pants. Why are you looking for your pants? It doesn't make me feel so bad. I'm fine. Oh, man. My parents are in Kent. In England. I was wondering with that accent. He's. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha.
They're not even gonna make the pizza. Nobody's there. Let's get pizza. No, I'm getting pizza. He's. Oh, loss of identity that comes with the apocalypse. Someone, the first person he found, he just gained an attachment to. And... <sighs> as long as you're not a liability, I guess. He said long to take years. It's been to you. Yeah. You said 46 months. And it has been said. And this is free. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I was wondering why there were cars going. Uh, this first night of rain probably saved a lot of people who otherwise wouldn't have made it. If you're gonna leave without him, this is better for him, but. What? Is he here? She's like turning, scared as hell. He's here. Hi. <laughs> Oh, oh fuck, oh fuck, oh fuck. Move away quietly from the source of the sound. Oh shit, you- Fuck. Fuck. Good, good. Finally some misdirection. Oh shit. Oh shit. God damn it. Good kitty staying quiet. Oh. Oh, soggy socks. That's not the big biggest deal right now, so it's. <laughs> oh, man. All this for a slice of pizza. Ah, oh, shit. Ah, oh, shit. Are you about to lose it? Deep, quiet breath. Oh. <sighs> shit! Oh shit, ah oh, shit. Is it drowned? Is it? We killed one! Kitty! No, don't go away, kitty! This film is exhausting. <laughs> I'm glad each of these films are like only an hour and a half because I, I don't know if I could handle two hours or more. <sighs> oh, wow. Oh my gosh. Kitty, why? Oh god damn it. It knows how to, it, it knows its way back, right? Can we just let it hunt and get its own food and then it can come back with us later? It's not like we have anything to feed the cat with. Don't let the cat die. She'll never forgive you. Kid, just Hey. You're gonna climb up? Oh, that seems like a bad idea. But I guess it's necessary. Oh my gosh. Are you fucking kidding me? Hello. Yeah. Must have been the wind. Meow. Can we not let this cat just go around by itself? Can you imagine A Quiet Place Part 3 and it's back to Emily Blunt and the kids 
and he shows up. Eric shows up at some point. Oh. That's... Yeah. Of cancer, too? Jeez. <laughs> I think having... Someone to care for and not worrying only about yourself in this moment, in these moments, can really help you through with these things. This is it. Ah, well, shit. The frickin' apocalypse. She was gonna have it one more time. We can go there. Just around the corner, the jazz club. Spend some time there. Oh, that is brutal. Just touching it. Don't, don't press down on the keys. I don't want this to be a suicide by music kind of thing. Is he looking for pizza? He's looking for pizza. 99 cents. He's hiding it behind his back. Uh, don't drop it. Don't drop it. <laughs> uh, he's, he, did he write Patsy's on... Yeah, he wrote Patsy's on the box. <laughs> this is somehow a really beautiful film. Eh, mid. Best thing you've ever tasted, probably. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> She's like, any other situation, I'd be rolling my eyes like crazy. <laughs> the more she connects with him, the more he she wants him to live. And carry a part of her. <laughs> Damn. How do they know there's water in front of them? Why aren't they just jumping towards the boat? <sighs> this is your therapy cat now. No. Stop the boat. Oh man. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh god damn it. Smash more things. Holy shit. Holy shit. <laughs> what about you? <sighs> Did she leave a note for him? I didn't mo uh, expect this to be an emotional affair. You better take care of my cat. <laughs> Don't feed him too much. He'll get fat. <laughs> and thank you. Thank you for bringing me home. Thank you for helping me live again. It took an apocalypse for her to remember how to live. What a freaking sentiment. Oh. And that's the end. Oh. 
Okay, so this was very, very different from the first two films. I might even say that it's not a horror movie. I think it might be a thriller. I think the moment that actually had my heart beating the fastest was when all the monsters were chasing down Eric out in the open. But there is one thing that ties all these movies together, and it's these emotional stories they tell and how beautiful they can be, how much they are about love. And after I watched the film, I checked out the general consensus, and people seem to not like this film that much. Some people actually seem to really hate it. I wound up really liking it, but I can understand why that might be the reaction some people had, because some people probably came in with the expectation of another horror film, or maybe they wanted more information about the government response, which we don't really get. Uh, I only personally have one gripe, which is a gripe I have with a lot of movies that take place in New York. It doesn't feel authentically New York. I'm sure it wasn't shot here. And there are questions I had about some of the monsters, like how do they know to stop at the pier? Like if they were just chasing sound, why didn't some of them dive into the water accidentally? And personally, if I was in the apocalypse situation and everybody was moving in a herd, I wouldn't want to travel in a group in that situation. Like just one person trips or loses their cool and everybody's under attack. <laughs> And I also think some people might find it realistic or illogical why Eric stuck with Sammy when he should have just followed the crowd. I also thought his thought process was illogical as well, but I think it tracks with human nature because we as a species do illogical things very often, and that's often exacerbated when the situation is desperate and dire because you put enough people in a situation like that and someone is going to make that same choice. Because Eric was completely lost, in the last few hours he realized he was never going to see his family again, felt like he had no purpose or direction, life was never going to be the same, if he even survived. And we saw him pop out from underwater in a subway station, and the first thing he sees is this Frodo, and maybe he just was looking for some sort of connection and he lashes on, and then Frodo leads him to Sammy. Frodo is such a good cat. He's told once to be quiet and just stay silent the entire rest of the film. Thankfully, therapy cats are trained to be very, very chill and very, very calm. But maybe Eric sees that Sammy's not afraid, or she is, but not in the same way that everybody else is. But given his own fear, it feels like she was some sort of beacon for him, and he follows her after she ditches him a couple of times. And the moment I started getting emotional for this film was when the realization came to me that even though he's more afraid than she is, he's able to deal with that fear because he has something and someone to fight for. Eric's fear never goes away, but it's overcome by his kindness and love, and and caring for someone in this situation is keeping him sane. It's giving him enough hope and focus to stay alive, and it reiterates one of my favorite lessons in fiction. Sometimes when you're feeling helpless, the secret is to help somebody else, and you get afterlife points if you knew that was from the good place. But it's beautiful, because everyone in this situation is desperate to stay alive, and Eric doesn't know if he can do that. But Sammy just wants to live one more time before she dies, and he sees that as such a worthy goal, and it gives him strength, and she gives him strength, saves his butt a couple of times, in fact. And I don't think she could have made it to Harlem without him, and I don't think he could have kept his cool long enough to make it to the boat without her. And even if he could, he's now going into this new life with a massively different perspective than everyone else around him. Cause like, who in this world had fun in the last 48 to 72 hours? Who else brought joy into another person's life? He's gonna have that happy memory of helping Sammy and the satisfaction of knowing that he made a huge difference in her life. So that's gonna be something he can carry forward and help society thrive in the future. And Sammy, Going that far for pizza, and hey, maybe some people don't understand, and they're like, all this for pizza? But they'd be missing the point as well. It sounded like Cancer took her dad, and even if it didn't, he was gone too soon, and now Cancer has her in its grips, and she's stacked bad day after bad day after bad day, knowing it's gonna end, and she just wanted one last good moment. Uh, eat the pizza that she had with her dad down the street from the club where her father took her and he played piano. She wanted to be reminded of what things were like before the good things were taken away from her. And it's very beautiful and so jarring and powerful to see her walking against the crowd that's trying to head to survival. Which, okay, seriously, people kept bumping into her. Are you kidding me? She can't escape that even in a freaking apocalypse when you're supposed to be not making any sound. Uh, so, okay, historical data and background information on that. There are racial politics of walking down the street in America because during the Jim Crow era, segregation, if a white person and a black person were approaching each other on the street, the black person would be required to move off to the side so that the white person can pass. Now, that's no longer a rule, but that kind of cultural expectation doesn't just vanish into thin air. So they've done studies and experiments with this. They had two people head down a narrow hallway and recorded how far away they were from each other before they turned to make room for other people. And they did this with all races and genders, and they found that white men in particular waited till the very last moment to turn, or they just keep walking straight and bump the other person. But crucially, only if the other person wasn't also a white man. 
And if you're having a hard time understanding this concept or believing it could happen, it's the same type of entitlement that happens with manspreading on public transportation. Some men think they're entitled to their own space, which everybody is, except their definition of their own space includes room where other people can fit. After seeing that hallway experiment or noticing on their own how often they're expected to move out of the way, a lot of people of color, specifically women of color, took notice and decided like, hey, I've gone my entire life moving out of the way for people, making space for people, when I am just as entitled to that space. And these people don't move out of the way to let me pass, why should I have to move for them? And obviously this problem extends beyond just racial dynamics on sidewalks, but some women decided they'd conduct their own experiment and walk down the street and not move out of the way. Sadly, predictably, they got bumped into so many times, some even got slammed into the ground, primarily by men, primarily by white men, and some of those men would actually have the audacity to move on without saying anything, or yell, watch where you're going, as if they themselves couldn't have moved out of the way. And of course, this is not to say white man bad, because it's about the way society is structured and how it excludes or dismisses other people, and we can't move past these problems without being aware of them and acknowledging them. Now, I recognize the situation in the movie is a little different, because Sammy's walking against the crowd, but the fact that even in a freaking apocalypse where everybody's trying to stay silent, she still gets bumped like that is just uh, too much. Anyway, Sammy's whole story is very compelling. The idea that it took an apocalypse for her to learn how to live again is freaking beautiful. And there's something to be said about how she acts towards her nurse at the start of the film, saying that he's not her friend, he's her nurse. It might seem cruel and she's lashing out because she's mad at him, but you also see how relieved she was when she saw that he was okay, and she definitely cares about him. It makes me wonder if she's deliberately being mean because she knows she's dying and she doesn't want people who she cares about getting attached. And meanwhile, Eric just worms his way into her life. She has the great thought of smashing down the door timed with the crack of the lightning, and then that scene they share in her apartment where they just let out these guttural screams in time with the lightning, it's... Oh, it's heartbreaking. And of course, the scene with Eric getting her mid-pizza, pulling her on stage, showing her a magic trick, super emotional, beautifully done. And the more time they spent together, the more invested in his safety she became, gave him her sweater, her cat, and hoped to dear God that he was escaped unscathed, creating as much noise to draw the monsters away. It's an apocalyptic film that's all about love, and I really, really appreciate that. And I had a pretty strong feeling this movie would do a sharp cut to black, but it still exceeded my expectations. What a freaking last scene. Terrifying, but also just because her death is inevitable, I was happy that she got to choose when and how to go. And to go out in such a badass way, man. Lupita and Joe Quinn really knocked it out of the park with this film. I'm gonna give it a 9.5, the same score I gave the first film. While it's not as good with the world building and the horror, I think the story of two strangers showing love and care even in an apocalypse is extremely beautiful. I hope Eric shows up again if there are more films that take place in the future, and I hope if he does, they keep it a secret till he actually shows up. I don't want him in the promotional material ruining that for us. But alright, this was fun. Uh, full reactions on Patreon in the link in the description below. Leave a like, and I'll see you guys next time with more. Bye, friends.